Hi there, I'm Camilla Campuzano, the Community Manager of Montessori Thrive and Needle Marketing, and I make videos every week to help Montessori school leaders market their schools, grow their enrollment, and find a sense of support and community online. This week, I'm going to be focusing on retention strategies in the Montessori space. Now, if you've been a Montessori school leader for a while, you'll understand that retention is a huge part of your overall Montessori marketing strategy. Once you get families in the door and you get them to enroll for that first time, it's great but now you have the job to keep them on for longer. This can be a challenge because we know that traditional public schooling is a free option that families have. So you really have to get them on board with the Montessori uh, philosophy. You have to educate them, nurture them, and build a sense of community so that they'll stay on longer because we know that Montessori education has so many benefits for every child. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into my five favorite retention strategies for the Montessori space. So let's get started. All right, so here are my five favorite retention strategies for the Montessori space. First and foremost is to focus on parent education. There's a reason that's number one. I'll uh, dive a little deeper into that later. Secondly, you really wanna formalize your volunteer and work opportunities in your school. Um, it becomes so valuable when families can be a part of your community in a bigger way. Thirdly is to invest in your school community, build a village for the families in your school. Fourth is to have regular check-in with school families. You really wanna be able to gauge where they are in their Montessori school journey. And if they're going to um, leave your school, stay, if they're on the fence, if they need extra support or an extra nurturing hand, it's important to feel that out. Uh, and lastly is to simplify your re-enrollment process. You definitely don't wanna make it hard for families to um, join your community again. Make it short and easy. There are several ways that you can make it uh, a simple process for them. So let's dive into my number one point when it comes to uh, retention strategies, and that's parent education. The reason this is number one is because we really need families to understand and live and breathe our school mission for them to stay on longer. They need to understand that Montessori is so valuable and it's different from traditional schooling that is available to them for free oftentimes. Um, there are several ways that you can get parents more involved with parent education. Um, and help them understand those benefits that Montessori does offer. First and foremost is host public parenting workshops. I say public because it never hurts from a marketing perspective to invite the wider community to come in and learn about Montessori. It reinforces the value of Montessori. Uh, for your current families, it can really help with retention because when they're getting that parenting support that they wouldn't be offered in a traditional school setting, it sets your school apart. It builds a community that is so much more um, effective and strong. So definitely consider hosting those parenting workshops. Now you can do this a variety of ways. You can either host some yourself, so you can have teachers create them, um, host them. You can create PowerPoint presentations. You can have virtual sessions on Zoom. You can also invite consultants or school um, parent educators, people to come in and do this work for you. Um, it's a great investment in your community. So whatever you choose to do, I highly recommend that you're hosting public parenting workshops as part of your overall retention strategy. Um, secondly, create a parent handbook that educates. Your parent handbook should go just beyond what life at school is going to be like. Have a couple pages in there dedicated to um, answering common parenting questions, to providing uh, information and support about the Montessori philosophy, a little guide on how parents can introduce Montessori into their homes the right way. This just is going to serve as a great resource for parents to reference throughout the year. It's valuable. And of course, they will not be offered this in a traditional school setting. So kind of go beyond the classroom there and support parents in uh, their parenting work at home. Another way that you can really help with parent education is to share informative blogs on your website. This works for so many reasons across marketing. Um, it works for prospective families who are coming in for the first time, but also to retention, uh, for retention purposes, because current families can then look on your school website, they can learn about Montessori, make sure to write blogs that are relevant to families, that include important parenting information, uh, and that will keep parents engaged in the Montessori community a lot more. So definitely make sure that you are updating your blogs regularly. Find a schedule that works for you. Another great way to do this uh, is to utilize email nurtures. Now, if you use a CRM or a client relationship manager at your school, this is super easy. You can keep a list of parents that you're aiming to retain for longer, and you can send them email nurtures around re-enrollment time, basically highlighting uh, the progress their child has made, 
um, and remind them of the importance of staying in Montessori, especially in those third years in the three-year work cycle. Email nurtures are really effective. They're just a way to check in with families, remind them of the benefits, um, and of course, they're free to send out. You can also utilize your open houses to inform. Your open houses can be a learning opportunity for families so they can learn a little bit about the Montessori philosophy and understand its unique benefits. Also, you can share resources uh, to support parent learning. This is a great thing you can offer on your school website or on social media. Um, offer some parenting tips, uh, share parenting podcasts. You don't have to produce them yourself if you don't want to. You could just find great ones online that are free to listen to. Share articles, share blogs, share supporting um, evidence that Montessori is effective and does work. All of these are great points and you definitely want to be investing in your parent education strategies if you want to retain families for longer. Another way to support retention in your school community is to formalize volunteer opportunities. There are several reasons why, but first and foremost, you're working on building a village here. When families see that you have a village that is helping them raise their child, educate their child, and really help their child thrive, they're so much more likely to stay in your community for longer. This is why it's important to really give people a role and a title in your community so that they can see that the work that they're doing for your school is impactful and meaningful. A great way to do this is to organize a formal parent committee. You can give out official titles and roles, uh, such as treasurer, um, vice president, president, etc. Give them positions on the board, allow them to plan events, help with fundraisers, um, even volunteer in the classroom if they wish to. Things like this really gives parents a sense of accomplishment and purpose in your community. Uh, it's so effective. Be sure to also collect testimonials from these people because these are the people who are absolutely living and breathing your mission. Um, a great way to do this as well is to plan parenting groups and spaces for support. You can put some parents in charge of organizing parenting groups, parenting socials, um, give them a job. Don't, don't be afraid to hold back. Of course, if they're willing to and have the time and space to and have shown interest in it, um, welcome them to do that for you. Uh, reward active community members. It doesn't have to be a, a, an expensive thing to do. You can simply give them uh, some type of memorial on your school. Maybe you have a special area in your garden where you can dedicate a brick to them or something like that. Make sure that they see that they are a valued part in your community, honor their hard work, um, and really make them feel valued. Uh, invite families to take on more if they'd like to. You can keep an eye out for people who um, are actively showing that they want to be more involved in the school, they want to volunteer. This is not always going to be all of your families, of course, but a select few. And make sure that um, they, they are really welcomed into the, to that role to take on more in the community because they're much more likely to stay for longer. All right, next is to invest in your community. You really want to take the time to build that village and strengthen it. Community encourages people to stay on for longer, plan annual events to bring people together, uh, create socials aimed purely for connection. It doesn't have to be for learning. It doesn't have to be for Montessori education. It can just be, you know, let's just have a parent night where we have fun, uh, a coffee hour where we can connect with other parents, build a sense of community. Um, these events are fun. They um, allow parents to connect, to make friends within the community. Uh, so it then leads them to, of course, stay longer when they feel welcome in a, com in a community. You can also utilize online tools to community build. Luckily, we live in the age of technology where social media makes it so easy to stay connected. You can build Facebook groups for parents and alumni. This is quite easy to do. It's important that you have a moderator, of course, and that you have group rules and that you're careful with who you let in. Make sure that you have the appropriate group members. But this is a great way to keep uh, families in touch and connected and involved in your community, which will help your attention in the long run. Also establish an open door policy in your school. Of course, within boundaries, you don't want to sacrifice your own personal life, but make sure that parents understand that you can always, they can always come to you for questions, advice, support um, throughout working hours. So if they need you, you're there to support them throughout this educational journey. All of these things are important. Lastly, I want to uh, emphasize get families to sign a community agreement when they're enrolling at your school. They're not just, you know, dropping their kids off and, and leaving and then coming to pick them up. They're joining a community and a village to help them raise their child uh, and shape their child's educational future. Uh, it's great to put together a community agreement to just get families on that same page so that they stay on longer and remain happy in your community. 
All right, so we're on to point number four here, where it's important to have those regular check-ins with families. Uh, you really want to be observant of families at your school. And now we can tell which families are really fitting in and thriving in our community and which ones need a little bit more support, may have more questions, may need more meetings, and that's okay. It's important to understand how each family stands in your school community. Have a consistent meeting schedule. Make sure you have that clear um, on your school calendar. You can have that calendar on your website. Explain why you have meetings at certain times of the year so that parents can understand their child's journey. Um, this is very important and significant for uh, retention purposes because parents want to know where their child is at. They like to see the progress. If they see success, they're so much more likely to stay. Uh, make sure parents come in to observe. Most Montessori's are already familiar with the observation process. Uh, we have families come and observe their child. This is so impactful when they see Montessori um, realized in their child that it is, it's truly transformative and it will help them to uh, stay in the community for longer. So it's important to have them come and observe and really see that difference in their child. Schedule those one-on-one -on -one meetings with teachers, uh, whether that's once or twice a year, so that the teacher can really go into depth uh, about that specific child, their progress, where they maybe need work, how they could partner with families to um, help the child thrive in that community. This is really important. Have communication forms in place. You can also utilize classroom management apps or a CRM for this, whatever works for your school community. Um, this way you have consistent um, communication between a guide and parent or family. It's important to have this so that, of course, parents are checked in to what's going on in school life. Uh, send informative newsletters. This is great if you're sharing blogs, if you're sharing Montessori education. It's important. Check in with families through these um, newsletters, send out event information, etc. And also make sure families are involved in school life. If you see a family that's a little bit checked out, uh, maybe check in with them. Make sure you know that they're happy with how everything's going, if they've noticed any progress, if they need any support, parenting assistance etc. Of course, in a way that's appropriate, you don't want to make them feel singled out, but make sure they just feel supported um, and a part of your community, of course. So all of these things are important in the bigger scheme of retention. Lastly, I want to focus on simplifying your re-enrollment process. First and foremost, you really want to warn and support tuition increases. What I mean by this is give parents ample time to plan and understand tuition increases. Don't just spike up their tuition and not give a reason for it either. Make sure parents understand where those funds are going. Maybe it's to give your much um, hard working, your many hard working teachers a gu uh, gu or guides a pay increase. Maybe it's to build a new building in the school, to open up a new program, support that um, tuition increase, and then give them ample time to plan for it. Don't spring it on them last minute. That's gonna probably hurt your retention um, for that year. Make it simple for families to re-enroll. Simplify that process, make it easy. If you have an online form for this, that's even better. You can utilize a CRM or a client relationship manager for this to kind of just help them sign everything up, all done in the touch of a couple buttons, filling out a form, filling out information, and of course, submitting their payment. Um, all of this will make it much less intimidating for parents to re-enroll. Uh, provide a one-on-one -on -one meeting for those third years. And what I mean for, by that is the people in those um, important third years of that three-year cycle, um, people that are maybe like in kindergarten or transitioning from upper elementary to low, uh, sorry, from lower elementary to upper elementary, those are the families you really need to check in with. It's important to have that one-on-one -on -one meeting so that you can tell parents, you know, wow, your child is stepping into the kindergarten year. This is a year where everything is going to come together and they're going to become classroom leaders. It is so important for them to stay. They have been working so hard to lay those building blocks. So have those one-on-one -on -one meetings with that specific group of families, if possible. You want to apply just the right amount of pressure to families. You don't want to pressure them too much to stay. Ultimately, the choice is theirs, but you just want to provide them with a sense of urgency, like, hey, the re-enrollment is due this date. Here are a few reminders. If you don't re-enroll, we're going to have to, you know, let people from our waitlist join the school, et cetera. Finally, invite families to see their child's progress. This ties in with observation really make sure that families are aware of the strides that their child has made in a Montessori education. This is ultimately what's going to get them to stay. When they see their child thriving, happy, and learning, they're going to stay in your community for longer.
I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you have any more retention strategies that have worked for your own school community, feel free to comment them in the comment section below. We love hearing your ideas. This is a community space where leaders can share their thoughts and ideas. I'll be back next week with another Montessori marketing video. Until then, take care and have a fantastic week. Thank you.